بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من كان يريد العزة فلله العزة جميعا إليه يصعد الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفعه والذين يمكرون السيئات لهم عذاب شديد ومكر أولئك هو يبور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هم الذين يقولون لا تنفقوا على من عند رسول الله حتى ينفضوا ولله خزائن السماوات والأرض ولكن المنافقين لا يفقهون يقولون لئن رجعنا إلى المدينة ليخرجن الأعز منها الأذل ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين ولكن المنافقين لا يعلمون صدق الله العظيم The lecture here this evening is about proud to be a Muslim. Now, what I mean about being proud to be a Muslim is not arrogance. Arrogance is something different from, being, from having pride. What, I, what my purpose of this lecture is, is that many Muslims today, although we claim to be Muslims, although we have a name of a Muslim, many of us today really have an identity of Islam and a lot of us would rather not show that identity to the non-Muslims. A lot of us would rather hide that identity. Whether it's at work that we'd want somebody not to call us by a Muslim name, but to call us by, with, with the name of Bob or Henry, or we have many Muslims like that. Or whether it's that we don't want to be, be seen with Islamic clothes uh, outside of the mosque or when we are around, even in the mosque, we don't want to be seen with something that identifies us as a Muslim. Or whether it's not keeping a beard or the appearance that we have or because of the fact that we are known as a Muslim and the Muslims uh, according to the media are known as fundamentalists, are known as barbarians, are known as terrorists, are known as cruel and evil people who are backward-minded. Whether it's because of this, I want to clear this. And basically what it is, is that if we Muslims feel in any way guilty of being a Muslim, then that could lead to a sin itself. Because we as Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us in the Holy Quran, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ Allah is the one who has sent his messenger with the truth and uh, with the true religion and with guidance. لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make this, this religion dominant all over all other religions. We know as a fact that Islam will never be perished. The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith of Tirmidhi, he made three du'as once. And then the Prophet ﷺ explained and said that I'll ask my Lord uh, to not uh, destroy this ummah in one go with, with an azab of Allah, with the punishment of Allah. And Allah accepted this. So this ummah will not be destroyed with, uh, in one go. Like the, the non-Muslims, no matter how hard they try, they will never ever be able to eradicate Islam from the earth until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. And the, the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will will is, uh, the Prophet has said, said, تَخْرُجُ uh, said uh, a wind will blow from the east and this wind that will be blow on the earth he said la uh, yajiduha mu'min a believer won't won't inhale the this, the air of this wind but that believer will drop dead basically it will be wind allah will send to the earth because of which he will get, he will have all the believers on the earth removed. Because the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that on a particular place, wherever the name of Allah is being mentioned, He always has mercy on those people. So the day of judgment cannot take place on this earth until the entire people of this earth who are believers, those believers have been removed. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith of Bukhari, لا تقوم الصاعة حتى لا يقال في الأرض الله الله. 
the, the last hour will not strike until no person on this earth will remain who is saying Allah Allah meaning no believer will be on this earth when finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send this wind the Prophet sallallahu says even if uh, there is Isa alayhi salam even if he was in a cave or uh, even if the believers at that time were in, ha- hidden in a cave they will not inhale the air that Allah would send to the earth but these mu'mins and these believers whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent they will, they will perish and they will go from the earth and on the earth we'll have only non-believers that's the only time Islam will be finished on the earth until then we've had a history of uh, approximately or just over 1400 years in that 1400 years we have done tremendously uh, we have done something which many other religions have not achieved that is that the way Islam has spread throughout the whole of the world um, the, the history of Islam and the Ottoman Empire the uh, Abbas, uh, let's say the Abbasid uh, Empire or the other empires that formed under the different Khilafas the way we have ruled and conquered the earth, no one else on the earth has managed to do that. And the reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the matter in his hand of spreading this religion to every single doorstep of this world. And Prophet says in a hadith of Muslim that Yadhulu uh, Am that this matter of Islam will enter كل بيت every single house بعز عزيز وذل ذليل with the with uh, the might the, the might of the one who is mighty and the, uh, the the low of the one who who is humble meaning whether one person is mighty and he tries he is mighty and he tries to stop Islam from entering his house Allah will still make this this is uh, this Islam enter his house whether a person is humble and he doesn't mind that Islam enters his house that Allah will still make that make Islam enter that house meaning the information of Islam will reach every single person and it's Allah's duty to make that make Islam reach every single person's house. The Prophet says, not even a house that is, is poorly structured, meaning a house that is made out of mud, or even if it's a house that is well structured or well built, every single house will have Islam entering that house. So the duty of this Islam spreading throughout the world has been taken by Allah. It will spread. The only thing is that if we, if I and you, if we show Allah that I want to be part of those people who spread the deen, then Allah will use us for the deen. But if we continue to shy away from Islam, and we continue to not, not have Islam as part of our life, outside the mosques and outside places, then Allah has no need of us, and Allah will not use us for this deen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a ghani, He is independent, He needs no one. And He says in the Holy Quran, in surah, the last uh, ayah of Surah, uh, surah Muhammad, uh, which is the 47th uh, chapter of the Holy Quran وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَدِّ الْقَوْمُ مَنْ غَيْرَكُمْ If you turn away, then Allah will replace you with a different nation ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ Then these people will not be the same as you And we have seen this in Islam In the uh, 5th and 6th century of Islam when Islam had spread and basically people had gone into this ritual of making Islam totally spiritual and not having Islam being uh, physically uh, in people's lives. Basically people had left jihad and people were, were, were just basically making it a whole spiritual religion. And they were so weak. Allah had said in the Holy Quran, أَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَسَتَعَةٌ مِنْ قُوَّةٌ Prepare yourself, get every single power you can and prepare yourself for this kuffar and keep yourself vigilant and keep, this, keep yourself like in a, as a military force. When people had left this, then Allah sent the Tataris there's no way a nation could have come and done so much damage to Islam. The Tataris came and they basically conquered uh, the Muslim, uh, the, the land. And the way they took over, it just, it just goes to show that when Allah removes his izza, when Allah doesn't want to give dignity to a certain people, then those people can, can strive as much as they want, but they will not be able to achieve anything. Ten Muslims, it is reported, ten Muslims, 
were confronted by a Tatari woman. We're not talking about a, a, a warrior who is a man. By a woman with a sword in her hand.